Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Give it a big Jazz and Blues Festival warm welcome. A big hand for Crybaby and the Dream Dream Boys. Over 10 years ago, a small idea began its journey. And today, we know it as Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival. Yeah, he's the one who got us in this game. I was paralyzed even in all that sad town. Yeah, don't you know where... For over a decade, this date has been marked. August Bank Holiday. The atmosphere in the tight-knit community of Congleton is awash with electrifying whispers as Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival reigns musical joy, bringing the local people and visitors together in this charming town. Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival, it isn't really about music. Music is a facilitator, but it's about small town sustainability and raising community spirit. Every band is amazing, you're not going to miss out on anything. That's another, another thing to put in the calendar, another thing to get excited about if you live here, another thing for a publican to get excited about, another, another thing for bands to be excited about, what's not to love, it's just ace. For me, I would always describe the ethos of the festival being about the, the town, bringing the town together. Um, and, and, and giving free music and that was something that was always really important to me that everything remained free so that no matter what uh, economic background you had you could still access and your family could still access, it, access live music. Today, the festival is organised by a small team headed by Vince Cutcliffe there was a time, in days long before, that jazz and blues did not hold a place in the heart of Congleton. All stories must have a beginning, and ours starts, as many often do, with a man and an idea. This man is Joe Manning, then owner of the White Lion, now proprietor of the Bear Town Brewery, a fine establishment that produces high quality ales and actively supports causes like animal rights. My name's Joe Manning. I, uh, I'm the MD at Manning Brewers, who owns the brand Bear Town Brewery. December the 23rd, 2009, I bought the White Lion. Me and my friends would go over to Nantwich Jazz and Blues Festival, which is one of the biggest jazz and blues festivals that there are. I think it's one of the biggest in Europe, let alone in the UK. The thought process was as simple as, why can't we just do this in Congleton? It's a, a very similar sized town to Nantwich. And I have a pub, and I know lots of other publicans now, so I'm pretty sure I could do this. Joe's idea was to bring something like that to Congleton, which is a smaller town, has not so many venues. I remember that Joe had decided he wanted to put a festival on. We all used to go to Nantwich Jazz and Blues quite a lot, just because it was a good, good weekend. And I think he'd, uh, he decided that he didn't want them to have all the fun anymore. The genesis of what would become Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival stemmed from Joe's love of the genres, plus significant inspiration he gained from a similar festival called Nantwich Jazz and Blues. Held in 2010, the first festival included six venues, the Bull's Head, the White Lion, the King's Arms, the Bear Town Tap, the piano bar and the town hall. I worked out a model in my head, which is pretty basic. Pubs pay for bands, more people go in there, drink more beer, it pays for the band, town is a fun place to be. <laughs> Went round a few pubs and said, do you like the Nantwich Jazz and Blues Festival? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Let's do one in Congleton. Around that time, we uh, were doing events anyway, so uh, we'd put on a thing, myself and him would put on a, uh, a thing called the Dirty Dozen, which was like an all day band event to showcase local talent um, and a lot of people were were doing that at the time is, is putting on their own own shows just to kind of for a place to play and then obviously we've been putting on events at the White Line for him. From its infancy Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival soon gained a foothold yet as with all great ideas such a monumental undertaking required learning from mistakes and time to mature. The, the organisation was uh, 
they were beginning, so they didn't really know exactly what they were doing, but they did very well to put it on in the first place. There were two people running it uh, originally, um, and I think uh, about four to six weeks before it, it went ahead, um, Joe's partner in organising it pulled out, which unfortunately left Joe pretty much on his own, uh, rushing around trying to put everything together. It went well enough to have a second one, is my summary. It didn't go great. There was always these echoes in the background like, Oh, Jazz and Blues Festival in Congleton, that's never going to work. I'm not really jazz or blues. So the fact that I actually played in the first one is probably a bit of a mystery. But I mean, that's the thing that they've always kind of done with the festival is even though it is called jazz and blues, they, they showcase a lot of talent. Well, the Republicans who were involved in the festival, probably 50% of them would have said it was a success. And I would say success was breaking even at that point. I think that's what I remember that, well, that first year when we did it, was the, the enthusiasm was there to do it and the drive of people wanting to do it, but it was just like, it was just bringing it together because there's so many different things to sort out, aren't there? You know, programs are big enough thing to sort out on its own, you know, but I think, I don't know who was doing it, but, you know, I think they just had a million jobs to do. So it was a miracle probably that it was as good as it was that first year, really. I think a lot of the venues had signed up, yeah, we'll, we'll, have an, we'll host an act. And then some bands didn't turn up. Some venues, like, were just waiting for someone to turn up and nobody did. It was enough to capture the attention of Vince Cutcliffe and member of Crybaby and the Hoochie Coochie Boys and Louise Wren, an employee of the White Lion, both of whom became involved in the organising of the festival starting in 2011. The main reason I started the Jazz and Blues Festival last year was because I wanted a festival in Collinson. Bands like us are only too glad to help out when somebody um, wants to, to do that. Jazz and Blues to me is just all about having a good time. It's uh, nothing quite like live music. A lot of people think blues is a very kind of low mood kind of music, but it isn't. We like people to get up and enjoy themselves. Anything that has live music is pretty much great. Especially if you're like in a cafe or a bar and you just sit down and drink and listen to music. The six venues are playing jazz and blues music live all day. There's no type of jazz or blues that's playing more than once. It's all completely different. Because it's so diverse and there's so many different things to see, you might want to do two things. We two came yesterday. We played here, we actually played this venue last year, and it was probably one of the best gigs we, we played. We had such a good time. <laughs> Whoever's organising it is, is doing a really good job to promote right. Congleton. It really is about doing something really good for Congleton. It's not really just about music, it's about getting people in town. It's fantastic to have something on your doorstep. It's just yeah, in yeah. places that I didn't yeah. know existed in Congleton. Yeah. I think it's brought a lot of people out into town who might not have been out and about most of the state. It just shows that there is um, an area for live music. <laughs> <laughs> I think we feel that Congleton's becoming a brighter and better place. I, I would say for anyone who likes music, give give Blues a chance. Thank you very much. A guy in Poynton called Gary the Hart, he gave me a list of his categorised quality of bands ABC with suggested price ranges and um, started trying to fill up the venues. One of the bands on there was Crybaby and the Hoochie Coochie Boys. I think they were a B plus. I went about sort of sourcing these bands, just ringing them up, trying to get the, the show on the road and 
I ended up getting Crybaby and the Hoochie Coochie Boys in the White Lion, which was my pub. We had outdoor covering all the way. It blew an absolute hoolie. There was like tornadoes swirling around and lightning and thunder and everything. The keyboard man there got electrocuted and cried and went off stage. But everybody else was loving the show too much. They were like, the show must go on and they booed him off themselves. And it was an amazing gig. And um, the rest of town enjoyed it. And at the end of the gig, Vince grabbed hold of me and said, I'd love to be involved, Joe think we could work together next year. So year one's 2010, year two is 2011, and um, and that's 2011 is when Louise and myself joined in to help organise the festival. Obviously, I've just had the most stressful two weeks of my life trying to pull this off because I'm 25 years old at this time, don't even know what I'm doing, and just messing around and suddenly the whole town's looking at me and they want it to be successful, so of course I bit Vince's arm off. And um, shortly after we met Louise, Louise started working with me at the White Lion and Louise had just done a degree in basically organizing events. And of course she needed to be on board with the show. I got back from a backpacking trip, went in to speak to him to say, oh, I want to be involved in the festival. And then he offered me a job working in his pub as well, which was handy for a whole spectrum of reasons. Cause it was good to get to know the local people and the, and the, and the town folk because that was handy for when trying to organise things for the festival. Because at first, yeah, I think, I mean, I think that we, we, none of us knew no, what we were doing. doing. And we'd have a meeting at the ice cream shop or something. Pub fins, don't lie. <laughs> okay, we went to the pub. It started like that. And then, then I think what happened was we started preparing, instead of April, we started preparing in... Earlier and earlier. Earlier in February, March. And then, then suddenly it was like, in October, September, October, after the previous year, we'd start preparing yeah, in September, just, October. It became a lot more demanding, a lot more of a needy beast. Um, the three of us got together with doing the next one. And um, <clears throat> I guess the biggest bit of feedback that I got from the whole experience was that there was demand to do another one. So um, the little tripod was born. The tripod did... Um, Festivals two and three together, Vince and Louise took it to another level, the level that like Vince brought his um, corporate experience of working in business previously and Louise brought her degree to the party. I used to take a backpack and ride around Congleton and then other local towns and deliver uh, flyers and posters. Many a friend I've taken out on a, on a day out like pitched as a day out, but it's ended up being here. You carry this bag for life. No, sorry, two bags for life. And I'm just going to go and deliver these around all the businesses in Sandbach. The Jazz and Blues Festival is held on the bank holiday weekend. And, and the key thing is on the weekend bit, on the, on the Saturday and the Sunday, not on the Monday. I'm knackered by the end of Sunday. The band information, the gig information gets put into the program, pictures, all that sort of thing. We have a map. We have information about what's going on. We have a whole schedule, there you go, 70 events. That's what it looks like. But that, all that work doesn't happen a couple of weeks before the August bank holiday. That happens in March and April. And we build the program in, in May, this being the thing that we built. In terms of preparing for the festival, You've got to have venues, you've got to have money. So I'd go around and hound business owners um, about sponsoring and it, the sponsorship started at like £50 but a business that's trying to make ends meet, I, I imagine fifty pound, like having time to review it, £50 probably is significant, especially when there's loads of other people that are saying, oh, can you donate for this, can you donate for that? You've got to have bands, you've got to have advertising or promotion and you've got to have people to help in terms of putting the message out there in all its different ways and you've got to have the kind of communication channels to make that happen getting the bands together getting the money getting the artwork getting the promotion putting the word out uh, yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that goes on there there's a group of us that take responsibility for, for those sorts of things. So I was there for three Jazz and Blues festivals, so 2009, 2010, 2011, and um, I slowly shuffled out of there and let those guys run with it, and they've done an amazing job with it. We started 
on a, on a slightly different footing. I think we we then looked at marketing and organisation in a slightly different way. So that was the that's the very beginning of it. Eventually, Joe, although still involved in the festival to this day, would reduce his involvement in organising the event. With inspiration by their side, Louise and Vince triumphed with their task of building an annual event, with some help, of course. Bringing a priceless contribution was Darren Graham, director at AD Profile Design Works, a company that has donated artwork year after year for the festival. He illuminated the brand of Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival with a bolt of lightning and a lick of paint, transforming it with logos, flyers, shirts and most importantly posters, which have become somewhat collectible merchandise. My name is Darren. I run a company called AD Profile, a graphic design company, and I supply the graphics for Jazz and Blues and on Plot Congleton. This is the front page of the 2011 program. So gone from a sheet um, that year, uh, that was 2011. 2012, we went to a booklet format and Louise designed the booklet format. In the early days, I used to put together the program, which you can tell. I thought it looked brilliant. <laughs> and I, I heard about these hours and hours of putting it together. I thought, it and looks like gracefully artistic. I'd make lots of little mock-up books out of paper and have them littered all across the desk. Like really a fish out of water trying to put that program together. And in 2019, here we are, um, nine years after Louise and I were involved, the 10th anniversary, a 40 page booklet. In 2014, I was introduced and initially it was just to design a t-shirt and then we developed the brand the following year. So the bear on the drums, which was part of the graphics that the Jazz and Blues guys wanted to keep, because uh, it was recognisable as the Jazz and Blues icon, and the bear was there with the link to the town. So Congleton is known as Bear Town. Uh, it goes back to the 1600s. Um, not the nicest story, but obviously <laughs> that was the 1600s, and there was a lot of bear baiting and things that went on. Just before the wakes, which was the name for like the, the kind of carnival type of time, the Congleton bear died and the town were devastated. So they used the money that was in the, the town treasure trove to buy a new Bible to buy a bear. But obviously it's not a very politically correct story behind the bear so obviously you've got to use it in a bit of humor so it went from being the drummer to playing various instruments carrying a guitar around town and it's always appeared in some form in all of the posters and all of the artwork and even on the new one since we developed the brand it's really kicked the festival up a gear as well because it's now has this new presence a visual presence as well as the audio presence there are a few British artists which are quite well known in those circles like Tom Purvis and Frank Newbold um, when you see some of their work you'll find that the style is very recognisable it's a very simple graphical style uh, and I just took that in, took it as an influence, really, um, and from the first design, which was the uh, viaduct in Congleton, um, the Dane Valley in Congleton, which is a very well known um, landmark in Congleton. It went from there, really. Um, we over the years we kind of Congleton is a fairly small town. So there's only so many landmarks you can pick. And we slowly started to run out of memorable landmarks, which is why the design changed in 2019. Uh, strangely enough, when we did our town hall poster, which was, I think, 2016, amazingly coincided with 150 years of... Um, the town hall, I think it was the town hall. Uh, so an amazing coincidence that Darren chose that as the poster design. Decided to make something a bit more vibrant, um, completely different. 
maybe bring a little bit of extra character in there. Uh, something a bit more in keeping with the Jazz and Blues Festival. Green and purple. That's definitely Louise Wren. It's kind of contrasting colour. Um, challenging to look at sometimes, but definitely gets attention. Because the original colours were like lime green and purple. When we did the rebrand, uh, we just picked a couple of really nice complementing colours and orange and blue just really worked. He's the guy that chooses the colours. Um, I just leave it with him to do whatever. Darren is doing this as a favour. No charge. He does all the artwork. Um, he even pays for the production of some of the artwork that we use. Um, that is incredibly valuable to us. All the pictures are so well put together and vibrant. Um, that's one of the things that was really missing from the first year, um, is, is that identity. I think the programmes were actually on photocopy bits of paper. I, mean, I, I, I might be wrong. But it, it, the way how professional it all looks now is, is fantastic, really fantastic. The, well, the main brand update happened in 2015. Um, that was when we did the, the full rebrand. Um, that's where it started, really. The Unplugged is normally in March. Just after that, we start trying to come up with some ideas for the new artwork. Things start to go to print within a, a month or so of the Jazz and Blues Festival. You may know of a not so small festival called New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, known for its tradition of hosting an umbrella march. Unsurprisingly, this festival passed on this tradition to Congleton. The umbrella march has come in. That was one of Louise's inspired ideas. She has been uh, a, a major part of making the festival work. And um, that was uh, an idea of hers to, to bring that in. So that came in the second year of the festival. From the town council side, we've, we've helped initially with, with things around risk assessments. We've been a, a funder of the Jazz and Blues since since the beginning. We've also helped with some of the logistics, particularly around the Umbrella Parade and the, the road closures. The Umbrella Parade is really sweet and kickstarts the beginning of the whole festival weekend. It's on the Saturday lunchtime and they meet down in the community garden and then parade down through the town. But it just gives people a chance to announce that it's all starting. The mayor gets involved as well. A lot of kids are there, they um, do workshops to make their umbrella and it's just about building the excitement for the start of what is always a fabulous weekend. With regards to the Umbrella March, that, that again, it, it's just growing and growing. It's um, probably never got as big as it should do because it, it's an ace idea and maybe we need to promote what they do in New Orleans a little bit more so people can see what it could be like. It's actually my mum. So she just suggested after the 2011 uh, festival, she's like, oh, why don't you open it next year with an umbrella march? And I was like, that's a great idea. Took it to the boys, they were happy with it. And then that's when we decided to do the, um, the workshops in schools, painted a, a spectrum of interestingly decorated umbrellas. And then when it got to the, like 10 minutes before the march was due to start on the, on the day of the festival, there was what, like 10 people there and most of that was my family. And we can play acoustically, which yeah. others can't. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we got employed to do the, the march in the town and the umbrella parade, which uh, was quite small to begin with. And uh, so we marched through the town and then finish and then go and do a gig after that. And my dad's band leads the uh, Umbrella March uh, historically, although not perhaps for much longer because they're all getting a bit too old for the, for the distance. They'll kill me for that. I know you being at the front of the back, the thing, you never see how big they are. And you see the photographs afterwards and there's hundreds of people behind you. And it's, it's an amazing event. And we don't do it the strict New Orleans way. 
But, uh, you know, we do it. And people just enjoy walking up the street with the band behind the band. Uh, but you, you, you get the gig and you, you, you turn up and wait and to make sure all the bands are there. They've all got the, the hat and the, the instrument and don't have to go to the loo or something like that. <laughs> and then we would just walk behind, dancing, dancing, more walking, shaking the umbrellas. And I would take a 20 umbrellas on my arm and just give them out to people along the way and try and coerce innocent bystanders to, to take part. Whilst dancing and smiling. I dread to think how good that dancing is. Um, and then, you know, from having this really small amount of people uh, participate in the parade to last year, you know, at the beginning of the parade, there must have been about 60 people. It was crazy, just like how... And, and they weren't using our umbrellas anymore. People brought their own umbrellas and were, and, and were dancing, marching with those. Yeah, that's... It's got a special place in my heart and I hope that um, the Umbrella Parade will continue long mm -hmm. beyond my years of being part of the festival. Kickstarting the festival at the Town Hall and marching through the town, the Umbrella March brings in people of all ages and from all areas, painting their own umbrellas and welcoming the festival to town. Vince also brought his own contribution to the legacy of the festival. Noticing a gap in the spring calendar of Congleton, Vince introduced Congleton Unplugged, a companion festival during March. The Unplugged is a smaller festival, and as the name suggests, the focus will be more on stripped-back acoustic music. And it was just an idea I had, which was to, to do a, the same sort of thing as, as Jazz and Blues, and it's about bringing people into town at a, it really is a quiet time of year for, for all the venues and for the town. There's not much to do between Christmas and summer. So I think it's a nice time to kind of get a nice town event on. And also it's a little, a little bit more dialed back. You did get involved because you played host. And Vince got me to host and look after one of the bands. Well, I just, I did a really good job of hosting. <laughs> and got the keys to my friend's pub and we all woke up on the floor in the pub on the Sunday morning and they'd done a gig on the Saturday and then had to do the gig on the Sunday as well. I saw them on that Sunday. Yeah, they weren't they were... quite as sharp as they had been on the Saturday. <laughs> they were a little bit quieter. <laughs> um, they'd been kind of uh, hanging off the ceiling the night before. I saw the video of them playing uh, with spoons and all sorts of we, we things. We put the river dance on and did dance, all got spoons and danced with spoons. No one really knows why. Yeah, then in the end we bought them all engraved spoons and sent them to them. It's a really magical night. Unplugged is uh, its kind of more our speed as a band. And then I've played it solo a few times as well. And um, that's kind of probably, we fit more into that than as a title than, than jazz and blues. But I think I, I like about Unplugged, I think, is, is that a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the big ensembles will uh, sometimes come to Unplugged and do, you know, kind of strip back acoustic sets, which is sometimes like a lot, it can be a lot better or just different. So I know Jim comes down from heavy weather and does a, an acoustic show, which is always incredible. I, I ran the first two, or I organised, sorry, I organised the, the programme of music for the, the first three or four of those. We started that in 2013. Now I really wanted it to be a bluegrass music festival. And um, <laughs> you all have to, yeah. Um, so we got blue, all sorts of, and the idea, acoustic music, because, you know, uh, you, everything had to be indoors so that you have a smaller, smaller amount of kit. And that meant no Fender Strats and Marshall Stacks or, or noisy wire wire pedals. So my band couldn't play that gig, because that's what we're like. Running Jazz and Blues and Unplugged, um, that they are too unplugged is, is a big festival in its own right with sort of 40, 45 gigs over over three days, uh, over a Friday night, a full day Saturday and a Sunday, just a Sunday afternoon. It's such a big operation running, getting all the bands and the venues together for that. I've actually um, involved two local guys um, who run a music agency called Music Gopher. 
These guys bring in something, they bring in young artists, usually based around the Manchester or Northwest area. I would say on balance that um, Unplugged is perhaps um, more local in terms of uh, where the acts come from and slightly more um, indie in feel. So instead of being really a sort of cut down version of jazz and blues it's a really highly energized music uh, festival in its own right we kind of recycle the artwork for the unplugged festival develop it slightly recolor bits and pieces and play around with the elements and just we kind of reuse the same artwork so the difference is you've got mainly probably i suppose it a younger artist uh, group, um, young professional artists waiting to sort of, they're on the treadmill of trying to get uh, into the business. I think that Unplugged's amazing. I think it, just like the Jazz and Blues, it took a couple of years to get going. It's in a colder month and it's acoustic and you can't get as many people into the venues, but I think we're there now. But the audience is just there to really have a good time. It's definitely grown quite significantly since that first year in 2013. humble beginning of six venues, the festival is now beyond 21 pubs, cafes, bars and more. Venue capacities are stretched beyond their limit. Customers new and old are attracted by musical notes, cheerful company and of course, a good drink. Each venue holds hues of all shades and warm service. Modern vibes can be found at the Young Pretender and the Prince of Wales presents a traditional pub environment. <laughs> Tim Sedgwick and uh, I and my wife Bronwyn own the Young Pretender. As a venue, the uh, the Young Pretender uh, focuses on uh, real ale, um, but also a range of craft beers, great drinks. We like to have uh, local music acts playing first, playing their own material rather than covers. We've been running the Young Pretender since 2012, when uh, when we opened the. Uh, opened the bar, having converted it from uh, what was previously a uh, sub post office and toy shop. We were invited by uh, the Jazz and Blues organizers to uh, to get involved, and we were more than happy to do that. It sounded like a fantastic idea. Um, the fact that it was a free music festival so that people could come and enjoy it without having to spend a lot of money. There's no ticketing or anything like that. They can just go and try out what the town's got on offer. Um, and I think the first festival had about 12 or 15 gigs. The second festival that me and Louise organised had about, I think, about 20 gigs. Um, and uh, this year's festival had about 70 gigs or events on. We see people coming in repeatedly to, uh, to support the festival. I feel that the, uh, the quality of the acts has got better and better. We get some really, really good acts. We get acts that you wouldn't expect to find in a bar. You know, people that are supported by Jazz North, um, people that have traveled really quite some way to, to come and play. I just think it's got better. The variety of the acts has improved. More venues are taking part. There's a, I think there's a real clamor amongst venues to, uh, to take part. And we've probably all got better uh, just being organised, ready for the uh, sheer number of people that come come in for that weekend. The Jazz and Blues actually provides something which is 
um, a happy medium works for everyone. The uh, the, the people that come and uh, see the acts get to see great acts that they're not paying for. The town is seeing more visitors come in and hopefully enjoying the, the town. And as businesses, you know, it's a, it's a very good weekend for us. So I think that it works on all levels. Venues need to view the whole process as an opportunity to advertise and promote their site. So they should be putting the flowers out and watering them and they should be touching up the paintwork and they should be making sure that the bar's clean and the staff have got their best uniforms on because they don't actually make huge amounts of money once they've paid the extra staff and the extra bands and things but it's an opportunity to sell your pub to everybody and you're getting so many people going through your venue that it's just a good opportunity to touch it up and show off really well you know when 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 jazz and blues are on at the beginning of the year when we're um sorting out our diaries we know when the dates are and uh, those weekends and the week before are always crossed off. There are no staff holidays on those those weekends. Um, everyone, it's all it's all hands to the pump, and uh, it's the uh, rare occasion that you'll actually see me behind the bar lending a hand, perhaps getting in the way, but uh, just providing support. We um, we really do have to get ready. We prepare ahead. The uh, the cold room is jam packed with uh, with with beer. And the uh, we we usually have to buy more glasses ahead of uh, ahead of what's going on. But the scheduling tends to work um, <clears throat> as a collaboration between ourselves and the the organisers. And they get a contract that basically says you'll provide space. You've got to be aware of your health and safety. You've got your own PLI. It's it's everything. They look after themselves as a venue, but we we let them know roughly what they've got to have in order to do that. We have some uh, local acts that we like to showcase and have played for us um, at both Jazz and Blues and at Unplugged and they've played for a, a number of years. People like uh, Lucy May. <laughs> any harder sometimes it's busier that's never a bad thing i think we did a, sh a show in quigley's which is i think it's still called quigley's which is um which was really good and then also that line of swan uh gig i mentioned was was good as well because we hadn't actually played together very often that year so we'd come together pretty much for the festival i think we hadn't played in like three months or four months and uh we'd only squeezed in because everyone's very busy a couple of practices so throughout the day we were like this is this could easily be a bit of a car crash, and uh, it was it was surprise. It was just really good, and we had a lot of fun, and uh, and I think everybody in the audience did too. I mean, we're we're usually in for 9.30, 10 o'clock before uh, jazz and blues starts. Our first act is at three o'clock, but from twelve o'clock when we open the doors. We really are just getting busier and busier. We're busy selling drinks, we're busy selling food. Um, and by the time it comes to clear up, it's uh, it's usually two o'clock in the morning. Um, and and people, people are just, you know, more or less dead on their feet, but they, they keep going. And and that really is it. It's, it's just the fact people enjoy it so much that despite the fact they're working, extraordinarily hard, they're just having a good time. I was talking about it, it's like the biggest thing that happens in the town, music-wise, brings everyone together, people are coming in asking about it, everyone's looking for the leaflets, everyone's talking about the artwork. It's just, it's it's busy, busy, busy. It's either busy getting ready, it's uh, busy when you're in service, and then it's busy when you're uh, you're clearing up and getting ready for the next uh, next group to follow through. The biggest and best things happen to Congo, music-wise, and getting people out into the towns, spending money in the pubs and the bars. One of the more interesting settings for a dynamic performance is the Beartown Brewery. In the brewery, you can sit among the barrels, listening to the music with fresh beer ready to buy. Why do we put gigs on in the Beartown Brewery? It doesn't always work. We put Jim Kirkpatrick. Jim's another great performer, golly. If you get Jim for a gig, um, you just, half the town want to go and see him. I remember when we were organizing that gig, I told Jim it was at the brewery and he said, 
great. That would be my favourite gig. And it was one of his favourite gigs he's ever played. gigs there I think we should I think we should just have lots of gigs in the brewery the Joe do that just as many before it's Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival was inspired by Nantwich Jazz and Blues established in 1996 by the late Philip Martin the man who built the festival ground up like Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival, he was inspired by a music festival in Hove, in Ireland, introducing this to the ecosystem of Nantwich. Yeah. Philip's achievement lives on to this day and is more popular than ever. I think the thing is with Congleton, it's always had a lot of musicians. It's a small town, but it's got a really, it's always had a very big music scene. And it always felt a little bit, like say, talking about Nantwich, that's got a lot of musicians around Nantwich, around that area. Just thought, you know, Congleton could have something pretty good. Um, it's always quite amazing how many musicians and what a diverse range of musicians are around the town. Philip was involved right until his death in 2018. Nantwich isn't the only town to host a jazz and blues festival either. Jazz and blues is permeated throughout cities and towns from Manchester to Leeds and, of course, many more across the world. We're all amazing. They're serving a purpose, and purpose is very close to my heart. And that's generally getting pubs busy and getting people out in town. You know, you don't have to go to a gig in Manchester in an arena. You can go to your local pub and support the pub and enjoy it in a pub environment. Many comparisons can be drawn between all these festivals. One thing is certain: they all do their part to commemorate jazz and blues music. Today, the festival is graced by an impressive array of 70 acts, a handsome achievement for a quiet town like Congleton. With regards to the musicians now, they feel about the festival, they love it. <clears throat> they get it, they know what it's about, they're kind of on the, the monkey run, for lack of a better word. They're doing the circuit, they're, they're on the circuit of Jazz and Blues Festival, so they're going to go to Nelson, they're going to go to Colin and Nelson, they're going to go to Congleton, and, and we're up there now with those guys, they're intrigued in it. <laughs> Each year, acts new and old come to the festival bringing various styles and flavours. From the soul in the blues of Crybaby and the Hoochie Coochie Boys and Jim Kirkpatrick, the swinging jazz of Swingology and the traditional sounds of the Salt City Jazzmen. Crybaby, Vince's band, I will always go and watch them whenever they're on. There's a few all the stalwarts in the festival, like your Vavooms, who everybody flocks to see those guys spinning around on the double bass. As you say, a lot of festivals glibly say, oh, Jazz and Blues Festival, and there's either more of one than there is of the other. There's not that balance there, is there? I mean, the thing is, is unfortunately, blues does seem to be 
a little bit more of a crowd pleaser than jazz. i think jazz is more of a a specific taste, so there's more blues outfits out there that we can book than jazz so we're proud that we're keeping it at the percentage that we are yeah but the the thing that we find is with the right venue and we've got some really really great venues in town um we can we can put um some really good jazz music on and people just take in the atmosphere and they don't realize how much they've enjoyed the music when you look at the the cvs these people have played with some of the the really top-notch names that often they are session musicians for some of the big names uh, ron sayer has played here a number of times and he always gets a great following there's a uh, liverpool-based jazz group um, who uh, are led by two uh, two trumpeters um, called the Weave, and they are just great. We find that the jazz tends to sit very well in the uh, in the Young Pretender. We've got local guys like the Robin Pierce Band. Robin's band always puts on a great show. He will pack out a venue. Well, the, the guy's a great performer and a great songwriter. Uh, Robin, write some more songs, please. There's some uh, jazz outfits. There's a guy from North Manchester, Freddie Garner. Um, not many people will know this this guy but he's about 80 years old this guy and he comes along with really a, a young band and um, we pop it into a couple of venues that I know it works jazz doesn't work everywhere and you just feel like you are at a jazz festival when he's there another one of the jazz bands that I like The Weave a bunch of session musicians who are fantastic Fantastic, but this is all their own material. Band leader Martin Smith puts it all together. Brilliant, brilliant band. Again, it's a really cool uh, environment. Bands, other bands that I like that uh, jazz and blues. Uh, Robin Beebe, fantastic performer. Jumps on all the tables, um, goes around with his hat on, runs around the audience. <laughs> Robin is, but he has got bundles of energy. Vavoom, a great band, everybody loves Vavoom. Uh, Ron Sayer and Charlotte Joyce, great outfit. Luke Shaw and his band Junk House Dog. Um, bands love playing at Congleton because the audiences are great. The people that come along and see them are great. Heidi Brown, she's fantastic. All, um, all her own material. And it's really important actually for people like Heidi Brown to come along. It's really important to have that musical diversity, but performance diversity. After talking to the townspeople, musicians, designers, pub owners, and a variety of folk, all inspired by the festival and very much a part of it, they had one more question. Will Congleton Jazz and Blues Festival ever end? Will it ever stop? I couldn't possibly say. No. I don't think so. As long as, you know, Vince and I won't be around forever, um, and as long as there's somebody that's always going to be passionate to steer it, I don't see any reason for it to stop. Vince won't be there forever. Louise is a young, talented person who's got other things to do. She can't run the festival forever, particularly if she's not making money to pay the bills at home. So it just needs to build a salary in there for somebody to manage it and push it forward. I don't, I don't, there's no reason for it to stop. Times and things change. Uh, it may not be possible to carry on. Uh, hopefully, you know, long may it continue. I'd like to see, obviously, I think everyone would like to see that. And I think if there's, provided that the appetite is, is still there from the public and the bands and that there are, you know, generous people giving up their time to organise it, um, I, you'd like to think that it will just endure. I don't know, I hope not. Um, not for the foreseeable future. Um, I can see them evolving. No, I don't think it will. Um, Vince will do it for as many years as he can possibly do it, because you can tell he loves it. But I mean, yeah, as as long as uh, I think as long as good people are kind of behind the behind the steering wheel, and uh, and it, it it does seem to be that way, that I think it will carry on. But it's people like Vince 
that uh, make a community. It seems the town can look forward to more jazz and blues festivals for years to come. One thing is for sure, it's something Congleton can be proud of. Thank you very much, thank you. What a great crowd. Give yourselves a round of applause. Businesses from Congleton help every year providing financial support. Some of the businesses are Beartown Brewery, a fantastic brewer of beer and more, and AD Profile Design Works, phenomenal providers of design. But there are many more businesses in the soul of the town. The Lamb Inn Guest House provide plenty of accommodation. The Town Council, who keep Congleton ticking. The Enclosure Trust and Town Trust, charities designed to support the town and its people. Not all can help financially. Many businesses help in any way they can, providing fantastic venues and more. This includes Bidolf Up in Arms, Blue Funk Rhythm and Blues Club, Electric Picture House, Jazz North, Music Gopher, Stone Hammer Music. And even after a decade of jazz and blues, more people come to show support for a fantastic event including Hammond McNulty and SAS Daniel. And on top of all this, the festival is supported by the whole town with hundreds of flyers and leaflets brandished in local stores. As a matter of fact, that's the reason this documentary was started in the first place. We would like to thank everyone involved for giving their time to be interviewed and to tell their marvellous tales. Special thanks to AD Profile Design Works for providing artwork for this documentary. This voiceover was provided by Chris Jam. And this documentary is a film by Callum Hilditch Crimes.